The Berenstein Bears and the Double Dare by Stan and Jan Berenstein. When peer pressure rears its ugly head, it's easy for most cubs to be misled. It was one of those days in bear country when everything was going so well, you just knew that any minute something was bound to go wrong. Papa Bear was off chopping wood in the forest. Mama Bear was putting in some tomato plants. Brother Bear was working on a tangled fishing line. And Sister Bear was running up the front path as upset as she could be. Mama! Mama! she shouted. What is it, sweetie? asked Mama. They took! They took! Sister was so angry she could hardly speak. Calm down, dear, said Mama, and tell us what happened. Some big cubs at the playground took my jump rope and won't give it back, Sister said. Mama wanted to hear more, but Brother had heard quite enough. He just knew it was those troublemakers, too tall Grizzly and his gang, bothering smaller cubs again. So off he stalked, heading straight for the playground. Not only were Too Tall and his gang still there, but Too Tall was jumping with Sister's rope. Onesie, twosie, I love youzie, he sang in a mocking tone. Threezie, fourzie, shut the doorzie. That's my sister's rope, shouted Brother. Give it back, you big oaf. Or what, sneered Too Tall. Or I may have to cut you down to size, said Brother, reaching for the rope. Go ahead and try it, said Too Tall, keeping the rope away from Brother with one hand and holding him off with the other. You know what they say, yuck, 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 he added, chuckling at his own joke. Half an oaf is better than none. When the gang joined in laughter, Brother got angrier. He forgot all about the rope and began swinging wildly at Too Tall. Why don't you stop bothering my sister, Brother said, and pick on someone your own size. Why don't you pick on someone your own size, said Too Tall, grinning. And anyway, here's your sister's dopey rope back. Huh? said Brother more than a little confused. Well, I, uh, thanks, I guess. I'll be going now. See you. Hey, wait a minute, called Too Tall. I may be able to use a cub like you. You got Moxie. Moxie? said Brother. Yeah, Spunk, Nerve, Moxie. He put a big arm around Brother's shoulders. Why don't you come with us and have a little fun? The rest of the gang gathered around and Brother said, I really do think I'd better go. What's the matter? said one. Chicken? Another one began strutting, flapping his arms like a chicken and clucking. Buck, buck, buck buck, buck, buck Pretty soon the whole gang was strutting and clucking all over the place. I am not chicken protested Brother. Prove it, said Too Tall. Come along with us for some fun. Brother was a little nervous about joining the gang, but he certainly didn't want them to think he was chicken. So when they scampered off into the woods, he followed. He got more and more nervous as they led him along a dangerous old quarry path, across Roaring Creek, and past the spooky old tree. After a few more twists and turns, Too Tall signaled to stop. When Brother saw where they were, he was surprised and pleased. Hey, he said, this is Farmer Ben's watermelon pa- Shee, hissed Too Tall, clapping a hand over his mouth. You want to spoil our fun? It turned out that Too Tall's idea of fun was to run off with one of Farmer Ben's watermelons. 
and as the newest member of the gang, Brother was the one who was expected to do it. But Farmer Ben is a friend of mine, he protested. And besides, it isn't honest. The gang flapped their arms like chickens and clucked buck, 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 into Brother's ear. I'm not chicken, Brother insisted. Then go ahead and take the watermelon, said Too Tall. Farmer Ben will never miss it. Brother Bear looked all around. Ben was nowhere to be seen, and it was sort of exciting being in the gang. Dare you, said Too Tall. Brother didn't move. Double dare you, said the gang. Brother still didn't move. D double dare you, said Too Tall and the gang. The D double dare did it. Ever so quietly, ever so carefully, Brother Bear crept through the tall grass through the fence and past the no trespassing private property sign and picked out the biggest fattest greenest watermelon in the patch then he broke off the stem picked it up and gotcha you themed varmint shouted a voice too tall and his gang ran away leaving brother bear holding the watermelon farmer ben had been hiding in the cornfield when he saw who it was he had by the collar, he was almost as surprised as Brother. Brother Bear, what in the world are you doing with that watermelon stealing too tall? At first, Brother was so ashamed he couldn't answer, but then the whole story came tumbling out. How he got Sister's rope back, how they called him Chicken, and how they D-double dared him. Well, said Ben, as they walked through his chicken yard. Chickens aren't very bright, but they're too smart to do something stupid just because someone calls them chicken. I guess so, admitted Brother. Just ahead was the meadow where Ben's sheep were grazing. One of them, a large ram, took it in his head to start running, and run he did, straight for the highway. Your sheep are headed for the highway, Ben, cried Brother. Don't worry, said Ben. Shep, my old sheepdog, she'll take care of them. Shep raced ahead and cut the sheep off before they got there. Sheep are like that, said Ben. Follow a leader anywhere, off a cliff, if that's what the leader decides. And some folks are like that, too. Follow a leader wherever he goes. Across a highway, over a cliff, to the edge of my watermelon patch. He looked at Brother, and Brother knew exactly what he was talking about. And speaking of watermelon, how about having a nice sweet juicy slice with me? Could we? asked Brother. Sure, said Ben, cutting a big center slice in half. And remember, hmm... This is a good one. Being part of a group is okay, and maybe even having a leader. But you always have to think for yourself, especially about important things like what's right and what's wrong, and what's safe, and what's dangerous. I'll remember, Ben, said Brother, and thanks for the watermelon. Brother decided to head home by way of the highway. And who was waiting around the bend? The Too Tall Gang. What happened? asked Too Tall. Nothing much, answered Brother. We had a little talk and some watermelon. Hey, cool, said Too Tall. Well, come on. We're going over to Winter Brunes and have a little more fun. No possible way, said Brother. What's the matter? sneered Too Tall. Chicken? clucked the gang. Ba ba bunch of sheep, answered Brother. Why don't you try thinking for yourself for a change? Puck, 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 they shouted. Ba ba bunch of sheep, Brother shouted back. But the cubs shouting was interrupted by another noise. The sound of someone crashing out of the woods. 
He looked a lot like Tootall, but was much, much bigger. Tootall's Papa Tooton Grizzly. Wha, wha, what's up, Pop? asked Tootall. What's up? growled Tooton. It's a little phone call I had from Farmer Ben about you. And, he added as he turned to the gang, if I hear about any more shenanigans, all your parents are going to hear from me. Now get on home. The gang got on home as fast as their legs could carry them. Hi, said brother to sister when he got back to the treehouse. Here's your jump rope. Oh, thank you, she said. How did you ever get it back from that awful Tootall and his gang? Brother shrugged. I asked them for it and they gave it back. Hmm, said Mama. You asked them for it and they just gave it back, just like that. Well, said Brother, going back to his tangled fishing line. Not exactly like that. 